In this module we continue our examination of functions. We'll consider linear functions, quadratic functions and cubic functions and just touch on higher order polynomials. The simplest function is a linear function of the form y equals ax plus b where x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable. a and b are constants. b is the intercept on the y-axis that's a b there and a is the slope on the left hand side we have a positive slope if a is greater than zero so delta x and delta y there the changes so a is equal to delta y on delta x that's an increasing function on the right hand side we have a, a decreasing function that slopes downwards to the right in this case a is negative so we'll have x1, x2, and y1, y2. Delta y is equal to a y2 minus y1. And since y2 is less than y1, that will be negative, and our slope will be negative. Again, b is the intercept on the y-axis. If we have a linear function of that form and we have two points x1 y1 x2 y2 uh, then we can recover the equation to the line for the graph we can find the slope so a is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so that's delta y on delta x as we saw before if we have the slope then and uh, one other point then we can use our point slope formula. Our point here might be x1, y1, or it could be x2, y2. We've calculated our slope, and so we can just plug in those numbers and find the equation to the line. Or given the two points, we can go directly to the point point formula and work out the equation to the line. This example applies those ideas. Taking a linear function a little bit further, here's an example where we have an inequality, a linear inequality, and what we'll do here is look at the relationship between this linear inequality and the equation to the line. Here we have two examples of how we use linear functions. The first example is forecasting a future population, in this case in Australia. The second example is interpreting a common linear function from macroeconomics. It's a consumption function where consumption is based on income. The next type of function on our list is the quadratic function. The quadratic functions have the general form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. As we'll see, the graph of a quadratic function is a parabola. The maximum or minimum point of the parabola is the vertex, and we can find where that point is located using this formula. Our textbook has a, a fairly lengthy derivation of this formula. When we go into calculus next lecture, we'll see that it's much easier to derive. Earlier we looked at quadratic equations. The quadratic equation is where the quadratic function cuts the x-axis, so the function is equal to zero. We solve the quadratic equation and find the roots where it cuts the x-axis. Recall our quadratic formula. We can see how different values of the argument of the square root affect the position of the quadratic function. So where b squared is greater than 4ac, so we have a positive number in as the argument of the square root, then our quadratic function will cut the x-axis in two places. Here we have the coefficient of the squared term is negative, so we have an inverted u-shape for our quadratic function. In b we have a positive coefficient for the squared term, so we have a u-shape for the quadratic. But this time we have b squared is less than 4ac, so the argument of the square root is negative. What that means is that our quadratic function doesn't cut the x-axis, so we have no solutions to the quadratic equation. Where b squared is exactly equal to 4ac, then of course the argument of the square root will be equal to 0, and there will only be one solution to our quadratic formula. The quadratic function is tangent to the x-axis. There's an Excel file where you can change the values a, b and c and see how that changes the shape of the quadratic function. Let's have a quick look at that. 
we have a graph of a quadratic function, in this case we have the parameters here, a is equal to minus 1, b is equal to minus 3, c is equal to 12. Here we have our various values, we've got b squared, 4ac, so we can see what the argument of the square root is. We have the value of x at the vertex, so minus b on 2a, and we have the roots. You can change the parameters, here are some typical values. So in this case, b squared is less than 4ac, a is positive, we can see it's a u-shape, and it doesn't cut the x-axis, and so on. You can try those. You might like to look at examples 6 and 7 now. While a quadratic function is a second order polynomial, a third order polynomial is a cubic function. General form is y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Cubic functions are used extensively in economics because with the right parameter values they can represent the cost function of a firm. So these are the parameter values here. We'll look at them more closely in module 4. Quadratic functions and cubic functions are both categories of polynomials. The general form of a polynomial is this. This is a polynomial of degree n, where n is the highest power present in the function. So we have here. Yeah. Some of the parameters, some of the a's, can be equal to 0, so that not all the powers from n down to 1 are necessarily present. The exponents in a polynomial are all positive. So if we have a function of the form 5 times x to the minus 3 plus x to the minus 2, that's not a polynomial. The exponents are negative. We can see how the parameters affect the shape of the cubic function in XL. Here we have a typical cubic function. We can see that the constant d is the intercept on the y-axis, 550. If we change the coefficient of the cube term, say to minus 2, that it goes from an increasing to a decreasing function. If we change the value of the coefficient for the squared term, it changes this area of the function. If we decrease it, we have less of a kink. If we increase it, then we have more of a kink there. We'll come back to cubic functions in Module 4.